So come and stand in the middle of the mat, feet hip width apart, perhaps just wiggling fingers, wiggling toes if you're a little bit cold or you've been a bit um, sedentary, you've been sitting down for a little bit. Jazz walk if you're feeling like you just need to move through your feet and your ankles just to um, get a little bit of blood circulating down there, down through the legs. Shoulders, lift the shoulders up to the ears, circle the shoulders down and back. Just getting rid of any tightness there, shoulders and neck. I'm not going to do Pacific engagement work today, but I just want you to start to bring your attention to the core. So think about the pelvic floor. Have you got any engagement with the pelvic floor? Can you bring some in? Think about TVA, so hollowing down to the hips start to draw in and see if you can just do it without holding the breath as we're starting just to warm up we're going to take the arms out to the sides perhaps just bringing the jazz walk to an end tuck the pelvis under just circling the arms think about growing really tall through the spine and as you're noticing the core perhaps you're pulling in noticing the breath so we're gonna, we did this one a little bit, we did the expansive breath, so we're gonna breathe in and breathe out, hands together. Breathe in and breathe out, three more. Breathing in and breathing out. See if you can still pull the core in as you breathe in, expand rib cage and breathe out. Try not to collapse as you breathe out. Stay nice and tall. Let's do one more. Crossing the legs then, arms up towards the ceiling and deeply bend in the knees, sweep the hands down. You don't have to touch the floor. Chin to chest, it's a nice release for the neck. And then reaching back up again, cross the legs the other way, so it's a little bit of movement. Reach up, get super tall, pull in the core, then chin to chest. Deeply bend in the knees as we're doing these to warm up. And then again, just crossing the legs. It's a little bit of a side step and cross, almost like a grapevine. Any dancers in the room? And then cross, lift. You don't have to go all the way down on these roll downs. You can go just towards the knees. Or you can deeply bend in the knees. You could look a bit more on our diagonal, so you could sort of turn to the corners of the mat. Just working at some different angles. Just starting to uh, warm up hamstrings, just starting to find that lower back, hopefully getting some release there on the back of the neck. You're going to go one more, your pace. Bending through the knees. Coming to centre, going to go to our squats. Reach the hands forwards, bend the knees, take the hips back. So if you've got your free weights at this point, you might want to put your free weights in. Just checking the feet facing forwards. You remember a few months ago, I gave you that exercise, sitting on a chair and just scrunching up the toes a little bit and we're pulling up the arches underneath the feet. Thinking about that during the squats, so the arches don't drop, the knees don't pronate in. Your pace, I'm going quite quickly just to get some heat in the body. But you can go a little bit slower on these if you want to. Front raise and then you could stand, circle the arms around. If you haven't got weights, you could go up onto the toes at the top. Just checking in with the breath. Check we're not holding the breath anywhere with this. Check in with the core. Have we got that pelvic floor poured in? Are we working with the transverse abdominis? Eye gaze forwards. Two more. Woo! <laughs> Coming into standing position, lift one knee up, 
So we're into a balance, high knee balance. Just lifting one knee up. Then shoulders down and back. Set yourself up for a scapula set, but just do one arm, the opposite arm to that knee. So it's a little bit of a cross body. Just gonna do three of them, swap legs. High knee, scapula set, just do one arm. Woo. Tuck the elbows into the body, get that squeeze on the shoulder blade. Now see if you can do it yeah, in a walking motion, so you're gonna challenge your balance a bit here. Keep the shoulders down and back. Keep the elbows tucked in, so you're really getting that kind of a shoulder squeeze. Here we go then, we're now gonna add in tree and centre. Lift and trees. So we're working into a little bit of the hips now. So you can do this without the weights as well. <laughs> you might find the body, I just did it a bit then, wants to kind of twist and if you've got any tightness in there, try and keep that core nicely set in the center. Especially any hips, my hips are a little bit tight from driving to Scotland. Just sitting down quite a lot. So we've got a bit of hip stuff coming up today. It's just warming them up. Last one. Scapula set with a tree. <laughs> okay. Now we'll put the, I think we'll put the, the weights down for this next one. Arms in front like a zombie. Spread out the fingers just to stretch out. You could do your piano fingers if you want, so pretend you're playing the piano if you've got any tightness there in small joints. So we're just going to go up onto the toes and then down. So just like you just want to be a little bit taller, roll through the, the feet, so the balls of the feet up towards your big toe and down. Try and engage through the little toes as well, so we're not rolling inwards on the feet. Lift and lower. Shoulders down away from the ears, eye gaze forwards. Tuck the pelvis under. Then you lift and then just see if you can do a little on the balance point, up and down, then down. Lift up onto the toes. One, two, back and down. And lift. One, two and back and down lift your pace if i'm going a little bit quick you can always slow that one down so you're just testing yourself on balance whilst we're doing these calf raises that's where you might be noticing it or feeling it in the calf muscles two more Holding and working with that balance. Use the pelvic floor as a bit of an anchor. Wide squats then. So again, if you've got any tightness kind of inner thigh, hips, you might want to do a little shimmy side to side, just waking up with that stretch. You can allow the feet to turn out. Think about growing really tall here with the, with the spine, then drawing the core, it's like you're tucking the pelvis under. Big circles, or you can put your weights in here if you want. I'm just starting you off to get into that squat before you add in your weights. So if you've got weights, you can put them in. Big circles round. Now, if you go together with your weights, it's almost easier because you can kind of push on each side to do that. But if you slightly separate them, your arms, your backs will work a tiny bit harder. Go around one way, then back around the other. Breathing in. Breathing out. Shoulders down away from the ears. Haven't done this one for a while. Woo. Try and keep your head still there in the center. Your pace. Two more.
Okay, gonna go um, down with the weights again to begin with, and I'll give you the option to put in into a one leg squat. So you've got one leg straight, you're bending the other knee. We're still on this wide uh, stance. Then think about getting really tall. Draw in the core, get the pelvis tucked under. Then I'll turn it, shoulder press. So you're lifting one arm. I've got a few of these coming up tonight. These alternate shoulder press, so just reaching one hand up and then bringing it back down. Think about the position on the back here. So I'll show you, if I show you sideways on, just try and tuck that pelvis under so we're nice and tall through the spine. It's, it's interesting, as soon as we go to wide squat, things start happening here. We tend to sort of arch in the lower back, stick our bums out. So just try and think about tucking things under. Get the length at the back of the neck. So then, again, if you want to, I'm just trying to get you set up before you put in on weights. You can put your alternate shoulder press into, it's almost a stretch as well, but it's a, it's a one-legged squat. And then you can just switch that over. You need, might need to self-adjust your legs, your feet. Now, again, any wiggling in the spine, so think about where your hips are. Grow tall out of your hips, stay strong, pull the core in. Getting nice and tall. Putting in this shoulder press. You're bending in the elbow and then lifting that weight up, down, kind of back from the shoulder, up past the ear if you can. Okay, so single leg exercise then. I haven't done it for a little while. So your choice of exercise, you could do your you could do your dips on the stairs, you could do your single leg squats with the chair, you've got lunges and you've got deadlifts. You can put your weights into them. The only one I wouldn't put weights into is your dips on the stairs. I don't think that's that effective for the um, knee. I'm going to give you in a progression, if anyone wants it, on a single leg exercise. So you can go out, do uh, 10 on each leg, if you've got time do two sets of that. The progression I'm going to give is roll back to a one leg, lifting up. That's quite an extensive progression, so only going to take that one if you're feeling uh, particularly energetic. And the way you progress that one, you roll back and then you come up without your hands, <laughs> which is a little bit more demanding. So there's a few options, there's lots of options in there. I'll run through the other ones in case any, if anyone's forgotten any of them. Thinking about what's happening with the feet, the knee, squeezing the glutes as you lift. And then these hips, trying not to let the hips kind of drop at the bottom of the move. Lift them. Send the hips forwards and up. <laughs> nice to see a few people trying out the roll back to single leg. It is difficult. I probably made that look easier than it is. That's a move for a move. <laughs> uh, it will take some practice. You almost need to get your shoulders um, over the top of your core and there's a, maybe do a few of the rollbacks to get in there. So don't feel disheartened if you can't do it today. You might have to do a few practices on it. Remembering your chair squats if anyone's doing them. You can always use your hands if the balance is too much or you've got any knee pain. If you're doing the chairs particularly good for strengthening the knees. If you've done your sets, you're back on the mat, we go downward dog, so you can meet us down that way. Jazz walk and you're downward dog. I think I've done a bit of everything <laughs> on that one. Did, any, did anyone do the deadlifts? <laughs> I don't think I saw anyone doing the deadlifts. <laughs> So think about these downward dogs, they're not tables. Think about the hips going up towards the ceiling. If you're feeling tight, just deeply bend in the knees. Think about the length on the spine. So we're trying to get this really nice clear line from the, the kind of the hips down 
down the back of the shoulders, the head's tucking in between the arms. We're doing that jazz walk, just stretching out backs of the legs. Taking some deep breaths, perhaps three more deep breaths here, and then I'm going to add in some little spins. Take us round to some side plank trees. <laughs> So picking a side, you can either do the knee down and then you can take your tree position in that way. So the knee, um, so again this is like hip opening stretch. Try and keep the spine as, as much as you can in a nice straight line. Or you're taking the balance and this is going to work a little bit more. Shoulder strength and the top knee is the knee that you're going to bend to take your tree. So option for both. Three deep breaths here, think about widening the ribcage, working with this side plank, lifting the hips, stretch through the fingertips, spin it back round, back to your downward dogs again, perhaps a little jazz walk. If you feel like you're struggling with this position on the dog, particularly on the back, find your plank position, let the hips drop, and then send it up again. Hinging sometimes on the hips just helps us get into that position. Then you're going to spin it again to the other side. So you've either got, I'm going to take myself around so I can face you still. So you've got either the bottom knee touching the mat and your foot's going up towards your calf or your shin. Finding that tree, send your hips forwards. So you're trying to get that hip opening on the hips or your higher in your side plank, top knee pointing up to the ceiling, send your hips as high as you can, squeeze, using the core here as well, three deep breaths, think about expanding that rib cage, spin it back round to your downward dogs, last time just again just pedaling through, And then we're going to bring it down on all fours, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Take a moment, find your neutral spine, so if it's a gentle pelvic tilt or that kind of cat-cow, but a spine mobility. Again, really good if you've been quite sedentary, sitting down quite a lot. Find that centre point, then pulling in through the core. So working again a little bit with hip work, we're going to go knee towards the elbow and then extend so just working with one leg eight times you can start if you're feeling stiff start slowly and don't go too too far into that you could even keep the the uh, knee bent as well if you feel like that's easier instead of extending at the end so if you can start getting a little bit more length and working into the extension as you get a little bit more into it I go to the front of the mat if you can, try not to look back at the leg, it's tempting. Keep pulling in the core so you're not arching in the lower back, you're working through that range on the glutes and you're working with the hips. Breathing out. Stepping that foot forwards then, towards your hand at the front. And then just drop it so that your toes are off the mat and your heels on the mat. So we're going into lizard and your hands sit through the middle. So again, we're working with hips in there. And again, you can work a sway side to side like we did in that wide lunge. A couple of times then, just tuck your toes on the back foot under and then lift the back leg. Almost like we're going to step up into a high lunge but just take it as a stretch so don't actually lift up keep your hands down but see if you can straighten that back leg and then just allow that to drop down again and then to have another go with that so just see if you can straighten that back leg and there's a stretch there for the arch on the foot as well big hip flexor stretch and then just allowing it to drop Breathing out again, see if you can lengthen. Nice way to lengthen through the stride. 
and then releasing down, bring that leg back. We're going to go to the other side, and again, if you just need a couple of pelvic tilts, cat to curls in the centre, just as you reset. And then let's go to the other side. It's the same move. It's going to be this knee to elbow, allow a little bit of an opening on the hip. So we're not, the hips are turning out slightly on this. They're not dead central facing the mat. Otherwise you won't get any stretch in there. Keeping an eye on this core. So pulling in, noticing it again. I gaze to the front of the mat. Working into that extension as you get warmed up in here. Breathe out if you can into the extension. Then we're going to step that foot forward again, find your lizard, drop the toes off the mat, heels on the mat. You've got that opening there on the hips. Again, you can put your sway side to side. And ready to put in, tucking the toes under, straightening that back leg. Full stretch. Taking a breath in there. Releasing it back down. Resting. And then trying that again. Tucking the toes at the back, lifting that back leg. Like we were going to go up into a high lunge but not today, <laughs> lowering, and just one more, and lift, and lower, bring it all back into all fours, lower yourself down, now if you want to, puppy dog on the way down, so send the hands forward, send the hips up and back, stretch for the backs of the shoulders, Taking a couple of breaths here. And from here we're going to transition into Sphinx. So you can lower your hips down, lower your elbows. Coming down onto your front. Send the hips down and then lift up the heart. Crown ahead starts to shine to the ceiling. Reach the toes off the end of the mat so you're thinking about that length all the way down through the spine, down the legs. Giving the body a little bit more space. A couple of deep breaths here. Now if you want, you can put in your cobras. So breathing into the lift. Crown head lifts and then lower. Gently pressing into the mat. You might even go up on fingertips as well. And then lower. Keeping the hips down towards the mat. Lower back stretch, you might even find the abdominal stretch in there as well. Then lowering down all the way on the front, we're going to swan dive, but we'll do a couple of the um, aeroplane moves as well. So lift up arms in a T shape, so you're lifting the shoulders, then circle these arms, you need a bit of space either side of the body. And breathe. Then release, bringing that down, cactus the arms, lift head and, chest, uh, lift head and chest, keep the chin tucked down like you're just reading a good book. Try and see if you can not press down too much with the hands, so go lightly with that and then you can, might want to try lifting up the arms as well with it. Four of these and you can add in if you want your extension. So you're reaching the arms forwards, come back to cactus and lower. Just sticking with the one that really works for you here. If you think you just want to work with the upper back lift with the arms down. And you're going to do that really well. You're just doing that one. Then just have a moment, rest, press your head on your hands and I want you just to let go of all those muscles that we've just kind of channeled and worked, just rest in this moment, 10 seconds.
just allowing the body to absorb it a little bit. Then we're going to go glute activation, so squeezing one glute, then lifting that leg and lower, eight of these. Alternate, so go to the other side, lift and lower. Nice long legs, so if you can point the toes. Finding a little bit of pelvic floor with this as well. So if you can get that chain, the glute, the hamstring, and then the other side of the lower back, stabilizing the hips. Notice if you're lifting one leg, are you pushing down with the other foot? So see if you can just work with the leg that you're lifting and that glute and not perhaps push down with the other foot so much. Take the emphasis onto the working leg, not the resting leg. Then we've got our glute stretch, so just reaching back, so if you can hold on to the ankle. Again, take a resting position with your head. Send the hips down into the mat. Nice long exhales, just so if you can let go of any resistance there in the muscle. And then you're just swapping legs, we're going for about four breaths on each side. Again, holding onto the ankle, send the hips down into the mat. Try not to allow the back here to tilt, so if you can keep it nice and straight square through the mat. Hopefully by this point you're starting to let go of a little bit of tension in the body. Double leg kick, so both heels are going to come up to the body and then lower. Try not to pelvic tilt as you do this, so try not to have movement in the lower back as you lift and lower. Then you could lift and then just tilt that across to the side, so we're just getting a little bit more of a stretch in the lower back. Lower it down, keeping the hips, the pelvis in the same position. When you lower, you might find that the lower back is wanting to move, the pelvis wants to move, so if you can keep it all in that same position as you lower and lift. So use the core. Stick with that one or if you prefer it, you've got tilted bows, so you're lifting, you're holding onto both heels, you're lifting heels up, you're lifting chest up, shoulders back, lower that all down and then you can use your knees and rotate round. Tilted bow. Still one of my favourite moves. <laughs> I missed this one actually last week, having last week half. <laughs> I know you probably all think I do Pilates when I get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> Maybe I should let you think that. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't do that much Pilates last week when I had a week off and I'm a bit stiff now. <laughs> okay, let's go to all fours. Releasing some of that back extension work with the cat stretch. So chin into chest, get some space between the shoulder blades, tuck your pelvis under. A couple of breaths here, send the breath between the shoulder blades. Now see how you feel, if your body wants to move with this one, you could work with the hips and some spirals. You could do a little bit of a hip drop again if you're still gonna, if you've got the tightness there in the hips. If you've got the small joints need a bit more of a stretch, you've got your wrist stretch one at a time here. Just turning fingers towards the knees. Try and get the equal weight down through both wrists, going one at a time. Just get the energy flowing all the way down through fingers. If you struggle a little bit with your toes, you could here just take a toe stretch. So again, a bit like what we did earlier with that high lunge half high lunge position. Tuck the toes under. So you're sitting back and you could take a stretch there for the feet a little bit more. 
Who remembers sexy cat? So that's a nice one if you just look over your shoulder. So that works into the side bends. Lateral stretch for the spine. So you've got that one if you want that one. It's a bit of free movement. Just before we're gonna go into plank positions. So setting yourself up, we're gonna bring the elbows down under shoulders. Lower your hips down. Now you've got that choice to have your knees down, engage with the core. Or option two, full plank. So we're gonna go with some little knee drops here. So it's a bit like a quad set. So you're almost uh, letting the knee bend and then you push away at the back of the knee to straighten it again. So you could do that from that position or if you've got your knees down, you straighten one leg and then bend. As you do these, try and keep your core nice and um, engaged and your, your pelvis tucked under and your hips are nice and still. They're not tilting as you do your knee drops or lifts. Eight of the knee drops. And then you're gonna see if you can lift up and take a dolphin. So I'll show you. And that's where you send your hips up. It's a bit like your downward dogs. Stretch at the backs of the legs. Your heels are most likely to be lifted in this position. Get the stretch on the backs of the shoulders in there. Take a couple of breaths, then bring it back down. Eight knee drops or knee straightens. Engage with the core. Take your time, no rushing. Then send the hips up, you might have to self-adjust your elbows to get in the position. Dolphin to rest. Find that stretch on the backs of the legs. Lengthen through the lower back here. Try and get that, that spine in a nice long shape from the tailbone down to the shoulders. Last time, bring it down. Planks eight of the knee drops. If this all is just a little bit too difficult, you can always take a rest in child's pose because that's where we're gonna go next. Okay, so from here, child's pose is sitting back to your heels. Bring your forehead down, drop your elbows off the mat. Send the breath to the lower back, so try and find that yogic breath. So if you can lift the breath as you're breathing in even a little bit more, lift it up the spine all the way towards the crown of the head. From there then, we're going to go to exercise one. <laughs> uh, still love that, my Kenya experience coming through. Sitting up and then allowing the knees to drop to the side. So just a little bit of weight back onto the hands and wrists. So it does strengthen forearms and wrists this one as well. You don't have to go all the way down. Another, another option here, if you've got any problems with your hips, you can put um, tightness, you can put a cushion in between your knees. That's sometimes quite a good way of doing this one as well. Gentle twist through the body with this one. If you want that little bit more, you can do that thread through with the hand. Think about the rib cage lifting. So just before you thread through, lift, extend, and then twist it round. Lift, extend, and then put in a twist. So you're just not letting everything kind of drop. Different sort of twist, you might feel it a little bit more 
in sort of the abdominal area on that one. Or you might just be doing working with the hips. Picking aside, then we're going to go to the clams. So bending the knees. Lift up the heels in line with the hips in line with the shoulders. Find the core, so just noticing that. This is a nice stretch on the neck here as well. Just lift and lower, just do 10. We're just trying to find glute need. So just a little bit of work with that. Try not to allow the hip to open on this. It's a very different move to you, the one we've done earlier. Maybe hands on hip. So just using kind of the back side of the bum. Then we're going to straighten out the legs. We're going to do a double leg lift. We need to be at the front of the mat because we're going to roll onto our backs. Bend the knees and come up to a roll up. So it's going to be lift one leg, lift the other leg, lift the rib cage, arm up to the ceiling, take a little bit of a spiral because we've it's a bit of a theme tonight. Then release that down, bend the knees, chin to chest, hold on if you need to, grab the backs of your legs. So if you can bring it all the way up, seat to position, lift one arm. We did this in the warm up, lift the other arm, bring it all the way down. Spin it back round, lift, lift, get that rib cage up, arm up to the ceiling, draw the circle, Use work with the balance, then release that down into chest, lifting yourself up, lift and lift, down with control, vertebrae by vertebrae, roll it round, do two more, we're doing four of these. Find the core as you come into your balance. Arm up to the ceiling. Take those circles down. Chin to chest, you've got your knees bent. Try not to let the knees pronate into each other. Now, challenge here if you want it. Lift, lift. So we're teasers, lift and lift. And bring it down. <laughs> Last time. Double leg lift. Balance, rib cage lifted, circles, release it down, rolling up, coming out of the darkness. <laughs> if you want then teasers, lift and lift and down. <laughs> Bending the bottom knee. And we're still lying on the side, lift the top leg to hip height, flex the foot. So flexing means the toes coming up to the shin. Then you can bend that knee and then lengthen. So just look a bicycle, point the toe back. So bend and lengthen, point the toe. It's gently coming into the hamstring. See if you can keep the leg at hip height, it's going to want to drop. Keep working the glutes. You can flex that foot when you're on the bike and then point the toe when you bring it back. Option if you want, hands behind the head. As you lengthen the leg to your, to your bike, your hamstring stretch as well, drop the elbow. Ooh. And then swinging it back. You need a bit of space. Okay, let's do this on the other side. Clams. Set yourselves up, bend your knees, lift up your heels, get them in line with your hips and your shoulders. Noticing the core pulling in, lift and lower, 10, nine, eight, a little bit of tension in the feet, seven, using the core, resting your head in your hand, 
four, three, two, and one. Straighten the legs. Ready for this mad combo. <laughs> four of these through. Lift top leg, lift bottom leg, lift the rib cage. Take the arm up to the ceiling, circle. Work with this balance, engage the core. Release it all down, lie onto your back. Chin goes to chest. Bringing yourself up to that seated position. Lift one arm, lift the other arm. Lowering it down. Roll it back around, three more. Lift and lift. Rib cage. You have to engage the core. Get some length down through the legs, get some space in the body. Then lower it all down onto your back, chin to chest. Using the core, bring yourself up, lift, lift. Go, go to tease us if you want, go for it. <laughs> I see some people wanting to go, that's great. Starting to get the hang of this one now. You can start to flow through if you want, you don't have to wait for me to call it. You feel like you've got it. There's always the little components as well. You could just be working with that double leg lift, circling the arm if it's all a little bit too much, putting it all together. Whoa. Those that want it might be on teasers with the last one. Into the arm lifts. <laughs> Bring it round then for that side kick, bending the knee towards the chest, that bottom leg can be bent just for support and then lengthen, sweeping it back and then bend, lengthen and sweep and bend. Try and get a full flexion on the foot and you've gone to that kind of 90 degrees, you're on that hamstring stretch, just so you get that central part of the hamstring getting into that stretch. Then your choice, if you liked that twist, hands behind the head, need a bit of space. <laughs> you could put your full body twist in there. Elbow drops to the front as your leg kicks back. I'm starting to feel human again. My body's actually starting to feel really good. <laughs> Last one of these. Okay, let's go on our backs. We're going to go to the 100 times 5. Some of you have already put some teasers in, so if you want to add them in, you can go through your layers, go through your progressions a little bit earlier than I give them if you want to. So just keep an eye on what's happening in the backs of the knees. See if you can get right angles there. Then imprint lower back down. So if you need to pelvic tilt, find that imprint. Shoulders relaxed. Length at the back of the neck. Find the pelvic floor. Find transverse arms just pulling in. And then just check you're not holding your breath when you pull them in. Four toe taps, eight pulses, and then it's an eight second hold. Here we go, four, three. Try and keep your hips still, they're not tilting as you alternate. Two, and one, lift head and shoulders. Keep your tummy still as you pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fingers to knees, lift up the rib cage, hold. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one and release tabletops if you want them four and three still imprinting two and one ready to pulse eight seven six five four three two one hold eight seven six five four three two one and release here we go four three two and one ready to pulse Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold if you want, take it to teaser. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Two more times through. Four, three, two, 
one, ready to pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and hold. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last time for three, two, breathing, one, pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold. Breathing. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Full body stretch. Give everything a bit of a squeeze. Point your toes. Put your tummy in, squeeze glutes. Get your shoulders to touch your ears. Scrunch at your fists. Scrunch at your face. Take a really big, deep breath in. Breathing out, just let all that go. 10 seconds to rest. Bending the knees and just place your hands on your hips, a heel slide. One heel away and then bring that in. Then start to bring in the core. So find your pelvic floor. Start to imprint the lower back down. Try not to let the hips tilt as you heel slide, as you lengthen away. If you want more, then hands just resting behind the head. Put in a chest lift. So you're looking towards your knees. You've lifted. You're thinking about the bottom of the ribcage. The, who was it? You're trying to squash your diaphragm. You're not just shoving your neck forwards. That's, that would be different. Then if you want more on this, so you're keeping this core center part really still as you alternate your legs, tabletop this and you can keep your chest lift in and then single leg stretch it. And then you're just trying to keep super, super still in that central core as you lower through. Now you could, don't have to take those so, so low if you're struggling, there's always a halfway point into that move. Four more, single leg stretch. Have a little rest. We'll um, use similar parts of that move. We're gonna take those alternating arms again. Arms up to the ceiling, heel slide, and then the opposite arm drops over the head. Nice little cross body, heel slide opposite arm then you feel like you you've got that you want more just tabletop that and again you don't need to take the, the legs super low you can just take it halfway again to straighten on a nice diagonal try and keep super still in the mid, in the middle so the hips aren't tilting you're working with your core you're working this imprint breathing out as you lengthen Four more. Hug knees into chest. Rock or rock side to side or take a big circle. You can allow the knees to open there as well if you want a little bit more work with the hips. We're gonna go for a shoulder stand and a double leg stretch combination now. So I'm just tucking myself in for this one. So hands down by your hips, send your legs up to the ceiling, lifting up your bum, shoulders down, support yourself. And then lower that down, articulate down through the spine, double leg stretch, send the legs out on a diagonal. Shoulder stands, bend, double leg stretch. You need to imprint on the double leg stretch, so you've got to think about using the core, particularly the lower abs there, the pelvic floor, the TVA, for the double leg stretch. Those that want more on this one, so you come down, double leg stretch, arms over the head, arms down, shoulder stand, arms over the head, Double leg stretch, it's quite full on, two more. 
<laughs> Try and imprint that lower back down. Finishing that last one, bend the knees, arms out to the sides. Completely relax, let both knees drop across to one side. And then center and then over to the other side. Again, if you've got any tight hips and anything like that, you could put a cushion in between your knees at that point. It's quite nice. If you want to try that one. You could look in the other direction, neck release. Try and be really heavy with the shoulders. Feel supported by the ground. We've played a little bit with our hamstrings tonight, so I thought hamstring stretch using your long bands. So check on the time, see how I'm doing. I'm gonna Double mine over just so I've got a little bit more of a stronger band, stronger hold. About 30 seconds then, push away at the back of the knee, lengthen out through the hamstring. If you like, if you've got a certain way of doing things, don't worry, you can keep going with that. If you like ankle circles, you like flex and point. Deep breath. Pushing away at the back of the knee. Just being, a, being aware we're not kind of lifting our bum off the mat there. We're not tilting in the hips to get in that stretch. Try and keep the upper body on the mat so we're not lifting the shoulders or the head. Then if you like that stretch that goes out to the side with your leg, you could always put that one in now. Of inner, inner hamstring work. And then we'll go to glutes before we go on to the other leg, if that's the case, put the band down and then just placing your foot just above the just above the knee, flex that foot. Now if you like to link in, you could lift up here, interlink your hands behind your leg and lift in. I mean, sometimes you kind of lift your head to get in that and then see if you can release it back down once you've got into your stretch so you're not all crunched up in your stretch. You might want to tilt that halfway over. Do you remember when I say, some, we are going to do it, where your foot goes down towards the floor. Maybe have a little go at halfway on that just to get a little bit more of a stretch there in the glutes. And then you can allow that to tilt all the way down. Foot comes onto the floor, opposite arm reaches out to the opposite corner. Hip stretch, glute stretch. Very satisfying. <laughs> just see if you can get to the point where you're just legs, just let go of that tight tension. You can breathe. Bring it all back to centre then. We'll go to the hamstring on the other side. So you're using your band. About 30 seconds again. Set yourself up. Pushing away at the back of the knee. Just check you're not lifting up your bum. Also noticing what's happened with the other leg. Is it turning out? Is it what's the other foot doing? <laughs> And relax your shoulders, relax the muscles in the face and the jaw. Again, just pushing away at the back of the knee, engaging with that hamstring. Again, try just trying to get to the point where these muscles just give it give you a little bit of space.
ironing out the breath, long exhales. Got that one where you go out to the side as well here if you want, leg out to the side a bit. Then putting the band down, find your glutes again. So placing that foot on just above the knee, flex this foot so your toes are going towards your shin. Then whether you're lifting up, and then just try and get your head down, your shoulders relaxed. Into that glute stretch. Especially if you've been racing, glutes might be a bit tight. Then put in your halfway to just have a little tilt halfway, have a little play. So if you can find a little bit more of a stretch in there, sort of working at the edges. And then allowing that to go all the way down, a little bit more work with the hips. Reach the opposite arm to the other corner. Allow that top shoulder just to go really heavy. So if you can send the breath now all to all the different, all the parts of the body. Bring it all back up to centre then. Feet on the mat, walk your heels to the little bit closer to you, you can touch your heels, pelvic tilt, treat it like a massage for the spine, and you could stick with that or you could take your shoulder bridge here, so lift up your hips, chin goes to chest, arms over, now here you could try alternating the arms, so like we've been doing a little bit earlier, alternate through if you want more, it's a single leg lift, so you can just hop, see if you can do that on one foot, and then you can just swap over when you're ready. Test the glutes on that one, so squeeze the glutes, try and keep the hips uh, square so they're not dropping. Keep that chin to the chest, that's a really good release on that throat chakra. You might just be going up and down with your shoulder bridge, just going for that spine mobility work. Last one, then bring it down, hug knees to chest, rock, circle. So if you can bring it all the way up to seated position. Did a bit of a roll back earlier with the shoulder down, so I won't do too much uh, more on this. But I will give you seals if you want them, and if you don't want them, just do your stretch, which would go into seals, so soles of your feet together in a thigh stretch so that's your first point on this and you might just want to stick with that stretch and relax any tightness in the kind of inner thigh groin area just stick with that stretch until that gives if you want seals come to the front of your mat hands coming underneath hold on to your feet so if you can lift up straighten through the back lift up the chest Clap the feet together three times. And if you want the roll back part, take it over, clap it over the head three times. Come back to your hover. Hover and then straighten through the back. Clap. Then let the spine C shape for your rock. Last one or last breath if you're holding. Okay. Just have a moment with heart stretch. So flex the feet. Again, working with the hamstrings. Hands down by the hips. Then just lifting up the heart. Lift up the chest. Take your shoulders down. Length at the back of the neck so you're not lifting your chin here. You're almost dipping your chin down, it might feel like you're doing that with the, spot. the crown of head stays in 
line with the spine. So it's just helping us get nice and tall through the spine. Three deep breaths. Wide in the rib cage. Flexing those feet still, toes going up to the ceiling. Okay, gonna go spine twist and sore then to finish. So uh, I'm gonna. Um, so you might want a cushion if you're if you've got any tightness there. You might want to sit up on a block or a cushion because sore <laughs> the sore is quite uh, demanding. Palms together, breathing, get tall. Shoulders down away from the ears, and then just breathing out into your twist. Get these long strands either side of the spine, getting a gentle stretch through. You're going to do about four of these just because we're going to go to the saw, which involves a twist. Now, legs go wide. You can see me. Flex the feet up to the ceiling. Now this, this is quite tricky. Get them really nice and tall. So if you can lift one arm up, <laughs> then lift the other arm up. Without twisting in the body, lift. Think about staying really tall so we're not crumbling this chest. So we're really in the like, just like we've done in that heart stretch where I was really getting you to lift and lengthen through the spine. That's why I said about the blocks and the cushions at this point. If you can get into that lift point, so you're really tall through the spine as you're doing these lengthens through. So let's put the sore in, arms out to the sides, breathing in. Breathing out, you do your twist. Then you breathe in again, you get nice and tall, and then you're breathing out, you're gonna go three times towards the opposite foot for your stretch. Breathe in, get tall, breathe out, out twist. Breathing in to get tall and then going down three times. I haven't done this one for a while, so if you feel a bit tight, don't panic. Perhaps do it through the next month. So put it into the practice a little bit more. Perhaps in the week, have a few, have a few goes at your heart stretch again, getting that nice tall position on the spine in a seated position. Keep those feet flexing so the toes are pointing up to the ceiling. Two more. Bringing the feet back in together, hands at heart center. Namaste. Have a lovely week.